Hello, and welcome to Lab 2, Part D, Fracture Zones and Transform Faults. For this section, we will use Google Earth. Begin by turning on Layer Part D and turning off Layer Part C. Then double-click Layer Part D and Google Earth will zoom to 1,100 kilometers off the coast of southern Chile along a transform boundary. The plate boundaries can clearly be seen within the ocean, oceanic lithosphere. Let's examine the types of plate boundaries by turning on the Google Earth plate boundary model layer. Here we see the relationship between divergent plate boundaries, seen in red, and transform boundaries, seen in green. The relationship arises due to the rigid nature of the lithosphere and the spherical shape of the Earth. As the divergent boundary, again labeled in red, arcs across the spherical seafloor, transform boundaries, known as fracture zones, act as connectors between the offset segments. Let's take a look at a schematic diagram to summarize, summarize how this works. Divergent boundaries are spreading centers where magma is pushed to the surface, which drives plate, plates apart in opposite directions. Thus, a transform boundary located between the two spreading centers will assist to offset this plate motion. Notice that on each side of the transform boundary, plates are sliding horizontally in opposite directions. Now let's return to our plate boundary. We know that transform boundaries are where two plates slide past each other in opposite directions. But how do you know which direction? Google Earth tells us that there are two plates, the Antarctic plate and the Nazca plate. Driven by the spreading centers, the Nazca plate is moving relatively eastward. Thus, we know that the motion along the transform boundaries on the Nazca plate side must also move in the same direction. Similarly, driven by spreading centers, the Antarctic plate is moving relatively westward. Thus, we know that the motion along the transform boundaries on the Antarctic plate side must also move in the same direction. Hopefully you can now see that if you look at our plate boundary as simply two large plates moving away from each other, then all the arrows on each plate must be moving in the same direction. Finally, the exact boundary between the Antarctic and the Nazca plates can be drawn. Even though the boundary consists of both transform and divergent segments, a single trace can define the boundary. Earthquakes. Earthquakes within a subduction zone along a convergent boundary tend to occur deep. As the subducting plate sinks deep into the earth, areas become locked. However, as plate motion continues, the elastic strain accumulates until it's released in the form of an earthquake. At divergent boundaries and transform plate boundaries, earthquakes are relatively shallow because the brittle crust is relatively thin and underlain by partially molten material where stress cannot accumulate. This concludes Lab 2, Part D, Fracture Zones and Transform Faults. After completing Part D in your lab assignment, watch Video 6, Part E, Close-Up View of the West Coast. Please address your questions to your lab TA.